In January, we fixed mobile auth. Well, in April, we're fixing mobile OAuth. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how easy mobile OAuth is now. We have released a new feature for Clerk. So if you're thinking about setting up OAuth in your mobile application, check this out. So here we are in an Expo 48 application and I've just wrapped it in a Clerk provider and then we have a signed in and signed out. So if we have up our simulator, you'll see if I refresh the page, it'll say you are signed out. And now we need to build out a way for a user to sign in. Now before it would take you about 90 lines of code to be able to handle both sign up and sign in with OAuth. But today we can do it in about 10 or 15 lines of code, maybe 30 if you're including a lot more checks and tries and catches and error handling, etc. So let's start this out. So first we wanna create a new hooks folder and we also want to create a components folder. The hooks folder is gonna contain a small hook that allows the browser to warm up when using Android. In the components here, we're going to create a OAuth flow that allows the user to sign in and it's very, very easy to manage. So let's start with this hook, which we can just call use warm up browser. Dot TypeScript, and this is where we're gonna handle that. So first we need to import React from React. You could also just import use effects because that's the only React package part we're going to be using, but I like to keep it as the same as the documentation for right now. Then we need to import star as web browser, and that's gonna come from Expo web browser, which is included when you start an Expo application. And that's all we actually need. Then we can do export const use warm up browser. It's going to take no arguments. And then inside of here is where we're going to warm the browser up using a built-in feature called warm async. So we're going to use use effect to do that to make sure that it is indeed warm when a user tries to use OAuth. So do react use effect. And then inside the use effect, we can do web. Just realize there's a spelling mistake here. Be an extra B in here, web browser. So we'll use that. So we'll do web browser dot. And then there's a function in here called warm async. And that's what we want to use. That warms the browser up. And we're gonna set this to void. And then underneath this, we're going to do the return statement. So we can just do return. And then inside the return function, all we're going to do is do void web browser dot, and there's this cooldown async, which also does the same thing. So this cools it down, and this is a warm up. So we need both of these just to make sure the performance is good all the time. And then we have no dependencies, so we can just do this. And now we have this use warm up browser that we can use for OAuth. Now we need to create a component. So we'll just call this sign in with OAuth. And this is gonna handle both sign in and sign up with one hook. So you don't have to worry about whether the user is new or old and we handle all the transfers for you. So the only thing you really have to worry about is making sure the user goes through the flow. So here we're going to import react from react. We're also gonna import star as web browser because we're going to need this as well, and that's gonna come from Expo Web Browser. Then we're going to import a button, and we'll just have that from React Native. And then we'll also import use OAuth, which is this new hook that we just released. And then we'll also import use warm up browser. So first we want to do web browser dot, and there's this feature called maybe complete auth session. So we wanna just go ahead and start that at the beginning. This just states that they're going to be using the web browser and we expect them to finish an OAuth state. They may or may not finish, but we expect them to finish it in this component. So now we can do sign in with OAuth. 
I want to make this an export const. We're going to take no parameters for this example, but you could push in the parameter for the button. So for example, if you wanted Discord, Google, Twitch, and maybe Facebook, you could pass in each one of those as a button and then make this reusable. But for this example, we're going to keep it all inside. So now we have that, we can go inside of here and we're just going to say use warm browser. So that a browser is going to be warmed up for Android. Then we need to do const and we'll do use OAuth. And inside of here, you'll notice that there is a single start OAuth flow. And this indicates that at some point during this whole function, we're gonna start the OAuth flow. Then you just pass in the strategy that you need. So for strategy, for this example, we're going to do OAuth Discord because that's what I am using in this example. Then all we need to do is actually try the on press. So on press equals, I'm going to use React, use callback here to handle this situation. So use callback makes it really easy to handle this OAuth flow. We're going to make this asynchronous. We're going to do a try catch here. So try, and then underneath catch. And inside of this try, we're going to attempt an OAuth flow. And this has changed dramatically since the last time we showed you anything with OAuth in the Expo space. So instead of doing a complicated sessions and rotating tokens and all that kind of stuff. All you need to do now is pass in the consts that we need, and that's gonna come from start our flow, so. And we want to make this an await because it is asynchronous. And then inside of here, you'll notice there are create session ID and also set active, sign in and sign up. So we'll actually grab this sign up one while we're here. So now we have all of that how do we start an OAuth flow? Well, it's actually already started at this point. So all you need to do is say if created session ID. So if there is a created session ID, all we need to do now is set it to active. So let me just get rid of this by getting rid of the red lines there. So at this point, we know that the user has successfully signed up or signed in to their account. So we can set it to active. So we can say set active, then we can say session, and then created session ID. And that's it. So if they have that, then we're all set. But in some cases, there may be a situation where you haven't finished this, and we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, we'll just put else uh, console log failed to sign in or sign up check requirements. And then we just need to catch here. So we'll just do catch uh, error. Then we'll do console log error. Now this is a really basic implementation, but that is basically everything we need. And then we just need to do our return. So we'll just return and all we'll do is return a button and we'll give it a title and we'll say sign in with Discord. And then on press, we'll just handle it with on press. And that is all you need to do to do complete OAuth flows from beginning to end, including sign up, sign in, anything that you could possibly need. So let's give this a test. So we've imported sign in with OAuth, and then we're just gonna replace this part right here. And then let's launch our simulator and see what happens. So we have this sign in with Discord now. So let's go ahead and click the button, click continue here, and you'll get launched into Discord. I've already authorized before, so I'm just gonna click authorize. And you can see now it's set to you are signed in. So we know that we have an active session. But what happens if you need extra information? For example, first and last name is a common thing that you may want because you want to target some user's information. So let's just go ahead and update the dashboard for that. So here's the dashboard. We're gonna go ahead and click name here, hit uh, required, and then hit continue, apply the changes. And then I'm gonna delete the user. So the user doesn't exist anymore. So and if we go through the flow now and we authorize again, you'll notice that we've ended back up on the same screen and we haven't been signed in. Now, if we go to warp and look at the log right here, you can see failed to sign in or sign up, check requirements. So we know there's a missing requirement here. There is a way that you can actually tap in to add the missing requirements. So I'm gonna make it really simple for this example, but let's just assume at this point that we have a form that the user needs to fill in their first and last name. So what you can do is tap into this sign up requirement. So sign up 
allows you to do sign up dot update and then you can pass in the missing pieces of information so in this example i know last name is missing so we'll just put perkins in here and then what we want to do is say uh await sign up update this and then set active session and then sign up dot created session id so even with this extra requirement here we're still barely scratching the surface this is 35 lines of code and we can now handle that so if we go back to our simulator now and click sign in with discord click continue and i authorize the user one more time you are now signed in and then if we go to our dashboard here and look at our users, you can see that like my first name happens to be what Discord has given me, which is the username. And then my last name is set to Perkins. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you made it to the end of the video, make sure you click this video right here. It's going to be algorithm driven and an absolute banger. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, why the hell not click this button right here.